The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Answering back the various speculations raised through the deception taken from the word, watchers found in Daniel 4.23. The reason as such, the word watcher written in the Chaldean meant to say I-Y-R, I-R. The characteristic to shine forth gloriously, who is hot and ardent, who is readily available to do the service of Lord God Almighty without any other queries. In fact, even since they are angelic beings, do not possess the physical body, they do not need rush. As such, we the flesh need rest. And these pure bodies wherewith they have been given, they are constantly ready and observing what the will of the Lord has to be done. And that is the essence of those cherubims or those angels who came in contact with Daniel or the king of Nebuchadnezzar to tell what would be in the future. And taking that as one of the key words, these ancient aliens have instigated much of the works which do not have any value at all. The works wherewith I wish, if they would have spent that much time in researching the word of the Lord from the original language of the scriptures after believing in Christ, not before believing in Christ, before, because a dichotomous in nature shall never understand what is biblical truth. He has to be born again. How can he be born again? He needs to believe upon the Lord and Savior as the only true living Lord. He has to believe that he is the only one who is going to provide us the salvation. He has been told many a times before that he is the only one one, there is no other gods before him. He has been exemplified himself and been telling right from the beginning through the people of Jews as well as now in the church age that I and I am alone the true and the living Lord. And in fact even the way this Jewish worship him, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Akkad, he tells to the point for us to remind us, to remind us that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the only Lord and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is very much unique. So there is no way you can compare any other gods to my Lord. There is no way you can compare to the knowledge of Bible doctrine to any other dogma or to any other theological realms of their gods which they are pertaining to compete with the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord is a written word. It is living Jesus Christ. Then we had uh, the hypostatic union, the one who dwelt among us. But now we have the written word. And this written word alone is sufficient for us and enough for us to have the exercising of your faith and not in your flesh energy. Many people may think it is pride for us not to have our energy to be stored in the flesh, but rather in the word of the Lord. Many people might have thought like that Eliab when King David, not then King David, the own brother of David, says to him, your pride, you are such and such. But King David was exercising and he was speaking the language of faith, the trust what he had in the one and the only true living Lord. Exactly in the same manner, even we have the trust in the word of the Lord alone, no matter whatever it comes. The Zachariah may come with his teachings. Ancient aliens may come with their discovery. Any other movies may come with their thoughts. Or in fact, even the Christadelphians being into the same Christendom after trichotomous as well. Their modesty should tell them if there is any error, the error should be in their mind, in their reading, in their understanding of the word of the Lord. And do you know why this error? Because though they are believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they have not used the rebound technique. The only rebound technique which has been given for us as a grace provision, not a license to sin, but rather a license to serve back the Lord. Why you know? Because in this angelic conflict, the intensity stage of this angelic conflict, we the believers are the targets. We the believers should not reach to the experiential sanctification wherewith Lord has kept us alive at the moment of positional sanctification. At the moment of positional sanctification, we the believers are far more superior and we are so much superior than to this instigated chief fallen angel known as 
satan that's why satan never wants to be satisfied never wants to be filled with the things wherewith it wants to look upon you that's why it says for you it has to devour it has to destroy it has to allure you from the world that's why what the bastard can do to get itself satisfied is the only way that you should not know the truth the satan will be satisfied only when you are not knowing the truth but lord and savior jesus christ has told we are not of this world we are not of this world at all but rather we have come to do the will of lord god the father and how can we do the will of lord god the father and how can we experience the love of god upon us only when we keep his commandments and lord has told you are my friends we only when you do what i have told how can we know that if satan's desire is not satisfied because if satan's desire is that when we start to know the word of the lord satan knows very well a desire is unsatisfied it is only satisfied on when we are not reading the word of the lord nor hearing the word of the lord nor giving top priority for the word of the lord but rather when we are giving our heed to such kind of a false instructions raised by zakir naik to such kind of a false things not having the language of faith but having yourself yourself evidential proof in your scientific invention in your scientific proofs and tell that see these are aliens but not angels see that this nephilim is still into force but they are not but they are but they are not angels which could be understood from the knowledge of bible doctrine when they could take the word of the word watcher from and start use such kind of a deception in their talks why can't we tell them the truth the only reason why can't we tell them the truth is that we are not having that secret relationship with our lord god almighty in our life. Lives. that's why dear brethren when apostle paul was been chosen he was been told how much he has to suffer for me those three years in the arabia the way he was been edified into the edification complex of the soul to apply this new things towards bible doctrine derived from the old testament and give us this teachings of the mystery doctrine of the church age has caused him to understand what is the suffering that we have in christ in fact even king david the one who could be anointed as king david was not aware that the man who is going to take care of the sheep or the flock would be available to rule the nation is Israel a man after God's own heart what went there he was thoroughly constantly prepared secretly so that he was being faithful even over the little ship where he has been kept when he was been faithfully done there he came to the kingdom and he ruled very graciously in such kind of a manner that lord called him a man after my own heart and not only that he was the only comparable standards for any other kings who could come after him they said there was none like king david they said they followed like the steps of king david but they couldn't do the steps of but they couldn't live the life like king david why that was a standard that was a faithful preparation that was a secret work exactly in our lives as well in apostle paul the way he went and suffered for us it makes us to realize that secret relationship which we should have always with our lord god almighty even you as a believer in the lord and savior jesus christ in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict need to have that secret relationship and that secret communion that secret relationship not being trusted upon the saints not being to have the flesh as your energy but rather he who glories glory in the lord that he knows him and that he understands him should be the ultimate of the principle of our life that we also have a secret relationship with christ so that secret relationship for a pastor teacher is second timothy 2:15 followed by second timothy 4:1 and 2 that secret relationship for the believer is second timothy 3:16 and 17 followed by second peter 3:18 what a great privilege it would be for us to have to be having our absolute confidence that is faith and the language of faith in the one and the only authority of his words and that authority of his words which is always veracity the truth and immutable and which will never change but what happens here we do not know how to have our knowledge in that truth we do not know how to consider ourselves into the truth we do not know how we should put our gain and confidence in the word of the lord the only reason why we do not know is that we do not know that we are into this new church age we are do not we do not know that we are the alekene ketesus new spiritual species in christ we do not know that we have been graciously bestowed with the relationship with lord god the father by a simple act of faith we do not know to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine 
children, we, the trichotomous in nature believer, are being constantly controlled, are to be filled with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And this filling or the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherein the KJV has led many wrong illusions upon this Christendom, because this moron-minded people, not having a true desire to worship my Lord God Almighty with a perfect and upright heart, have caused and raised this filling ministry as such, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will make them to speak in tongues. Lord God, the Holy Spirit will give them power to make miracles or healings after the completion of canon of scripture when once the apostleship authority was been established, these spiritual gifts were no longer into use. They have been just kept aside. The only spiritual gifts that are into use today are none other but the gift of a pastor teacher and the gift of an evangelist followed by the gift of help, hospitality and giving and none other than that dear brethren if you have any talent of singing and dancing that, refer that refers not to the spiritual gift but rather it is a talent there is a difference between a spiritual gift and a talent spiritual gift is what Lord God the Holy Spirit graciously bestows upon us at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone and preferably for a male believer it is the gift of a pastor teacher the bona fide gift to rightly divide the world Truth. And do you know what does it take? It takes that secret relationship. And this secret relationship is none other but having with our Lord constant communion and fellowship to be faithfully prepared in the word of the Lord. And if you're not able to have that faithful preparation in the word of the Lord, if you're not able to understand that faithful preparation in Lord God Almighty, if you're not able to understand the true purpose, why we have been given this spiritual gift and what it demands on behalf of that, then your service and your ministry is absolutely useless. You cannot even compare what dispensation you are. You cannot even know what is rebound. You cannot even know what it makes us to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that our unique spiritual life after salvation entirely depends upon the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. And if there is no ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, never we can come to know the truth. And since we do not know the truth, Wrong priorities are the only priorities what we give in our life. Wrong priorities like having not secret relationship with Lord, but rather looking upon the pleasurable appreciation by those saints to whom you get along with. The only thing what you should desire in your life, dear brethren, is that whether Lord appreciates me or not, whether Lord pleased, whether Lord is pleased by my work or not, not this man. Because this man may have been having a witnesses for you at the work. You may they may be your joy and your rejoice at the judgment seat of Christ. But dear brethren, when you have done your duty properly in giving Lord that honor, that rejoicement, that joy that he could find in you and that he could always be desireful of you and what else do you require as a testimony from these people dear brethren ultimately what we need to know as a pastor teachers that we should rightly divide the word of truth and without having proper knowledge in Bible doctrine without having to understand the word of the Lord wherewith it is infallible and inerrant without having proper significance to know and to get along those things wherewith why we have been chosen wherewith why we have been called wherewith why we have been given this great privilege and opportunity this unique spiritual gift has caused many people not to know the true purpose in this unique dispensation in this unique dispensation of the church age each and every believer has to know and to ru the rule and to follow only one SOP that is system order procedure and this system order procedure for the believer is nothing else but to be controlled of the spirit through rebound because many men do not know this privilege as such how to be controlled how to be controlled of the spirit because if it is not the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this church age particularly after salvation and not only for the you believer of church age but even for the unbeliever if it is not the ministry of common and efficacious grace there is no salvation for the unbeliever and there is no spiritual growth for the believer so we need to obey the voice of lord god almighty the voice of lord god almighty says for a believer to grow in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine and how can we grow in the grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine until and unless we do not have that zeal we do not have that desire we do not have that secret love towards my Lord. We do not desire for the truth. We do not persevere to have that stability and strength in our character. We do not have that momentum. We do not have that motivation. And above all, if we do not have that happiness, what we can find in Christ. And apart, and, and apart from that, dear brethren, what all we would like to do, particularly concerning in this church age, giving wrong priorities like tithes, the penance, or in fact even wrong priorities for emotional based worship services, and thinking that this is the ultima, and thinking that this is the only growth, and thinking that this can be 
the only procedure. You have really lost the focus. You have really lost the goal. You have really went around by looking those vain things, considering these vain things are only true things in our life. And that until then, when you are into such kind of a strategy of your, of your mind, of your viewpoint, you have lost the goal. You have surely lost everything wherewith Lord has ordained for you to come into this eternal life where with, with honor, with glory, with praise, you should appear at the judgment seat of Christ. A man who needs not to be ashamed like an unprofitable slave who has done that which was duty to be done. And he should be much more humble enough because Lord always bestows more grace upon the humble believer and Lord makes war against the arrogant believer. Yet the way this believer should tell, Lord, if you would have been here, you would have done much better work than us. But Lord, since we have been indwelled by this old sin nature as well as in the physical energy, we couldn't have done it the best because we always needed some recharge and we always needed our old sin nature to yield to our lust patterns. To grow up, it will take time. As you're not aware that as a kid who, who's been born to grow up, he requires sucking of milk. But exactly in the same manner of Christian realm, our spiritually born believer also should desire the sucking of milk, the sincere milk of the word of the Lord, so that he can throw out all his hypocritical manner, all his sin nature, all his evil renderings, all his evil doings, so that he can know the first stage along itself, you have lost down all your immorality standards. And these immorality standards are not the Christian major theme to survive like an unbeliever were superiorly trying to be moral. But today's Christian ministers are emphasizing upon that rather than emphasizing upon this unique spiritual life, upon this mystery doctrine of the church age, upon the protocol plan of God. So dear brethren, in the first step itself, when you are being newly born, as you have been physically born, desire the milk, you need to desire the sincere milk of the word of the Lord, which can throw you out, which can keep you away from all forms of hypocrisy, evil renderings, evil doings, and bittering, if not even the jealousy or mental attitude since whatever you can name them everything could be washed out why so that now you being born into this royal family of God at that first stage of cleansing you have another two stages of to be grown up like the bread as the child grows up after consuming that milk and then after not only the bread the third stage he requires strong meat and strong meat is what dear brethren you and I need to understand particularly the unique spiritual life followed by the spiritual self-esteem spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity, the three adult stages of this unique spiritual life. And until unless you come to know this truth, Satan wants always you to be destructed or destroyed or deviated your mind from the word of the Lord and put you into those preferences which are no preferences at all. And it wants to give you into those things which are no valuable at all. And that's why it always allows you to consider and to look upon the debate of Zakir Nayak, upon this consideration of ancient aliens, in fact even Christian scholars and Christian theologians, in fact even the so-called foolish pastors pastors would not even have the faith in the word of the Lord has caused many people of their congregation to believe that aliens are the only angels and they're trying to tell that UFO technology is what the Ezekiel chapter 1 description having wheels and wheels the way eyes have been kept behind and before them and this is the way how aliens have really appeared and this is the technology what we can see. Dear brethren, all these things are sheer out of a lie. Search for extraterrestrial information is not required, but search for your exegetical information from biblical truth is required. If you can do that, if you can exegete it, if you can inculcate it under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then only you can come and realize and discern what are the spiritual things and what is the glory and the wealth that we have in Christ. Since you do not have that time, since you do not have that understanding, since you are not able to look upon the word of the Lord, as such the word of the Lord demands to you you have lost the goal and you have been a prey for such kind of a useless and worthless things that have been described in today's Christendom. The prehistoric conflict despite the exalted position of Lucifer, Lucifer became dissatisfied and wanted even more. He led an attempted cope against God and introduced the concept of evil into prehistory. For this Lucifer was sentenced to eternal condemnation in the lake of fire. His fall launched the conflict of the angels. The conflict 
conflict in which we are in intimately and immediately involved. How did this Satan prehistoric fall came? In Ezekiel 28:15, he said, you, that is Lucifer, were blameless in your eyes from the day you were created until unrighteousness, that is the original sin was found in you, which is the moral fall. Lucifer was created a sinless, perfect being, mightier than all the other angelic creations. Secretly, he began to cover the sovereignty, power, and the glory of God. Omniscient God found the unrighteousness in his prized angel. That is what he was always the defender of his holiness innocence. Lucifer had decided in his mind to rebel against God before he committed any war act of sin. From this the original pride from this moment on Lucifer became known as Satan the title Satan is a Hellenized form of the Hebrew Satan and means enemy he is variously called the serpent of old the devil Satan who devises the who deceives the entire world as told in Revelation 12 9 this one spark of arrogance initiated sin in the universe and caused his personal demise arrogance motivated Satan's revolution in heaven and in earth the corner store of his cosmic system on planet earth the cosmic system is Satan's orderly cohesive and multifaceted system of thinking which includes a purpose strategy and structure of authority designed to subvert the human race and control the world he now rules as told in Ephesians 2 2 Satan's cosmic system is alternative to the perfect plan of God is the classroom for communicating Satan's false doctrines and this men are not able to come out of this Satan's cosmic system because they do not love and desire the truth if they could ever love and desire the truth then they could ever understand what is that experience position and how they can reach to that experiential sanctification of that positionally given position in Christ superiorly exalted than the chief fallen angel known as Satan since these men are into false doctrine and communicating false doctrine they do not know what is the truth false doctrine is nothing but rejection of isagogical categorical and exegetical communication in the biblical pulpits and rejection of Bible teaching is nothing but apostasy but the rejection of the exact word search for exegesis in the truth search for isagogical information in the truth search for the things wherewith they have been kept alive and they want to know the truth is what you can tell it is Satan's cosmic system Satan's cosmic system never has time to dig the word from the original languages of the truth but rather they want to learn those things which are no value at all what is Satan's attitude then it has been clearly described for us in Isaiah 14 13 14 but you said in your heart I will ascend to heaven I will rise my throne above the stars of God I will sit that is God of sent angels I will sit on the Mount of Assembly the place of assembly for angels in heaven I will recesses in the recesses of the north I will ascend above the heights of the clouds that is angelic masses I will make myself like the most high God these two verses describe mental attitude since underlying the prehistoric fall of Satan instead of thinking about the high honor bestowed upon him Satan justified his ruthless ambition and deceived himself regarding his own ability the anointed cherub became absorbed in his own splendor and wisdom he asserted his independence from God choosing his own will over God's will was the quintessence of sin Satan's unchecked pride culminated in five abominable I wills founded in Isaiah 14 13 through 14 his five presumptions boasts manifested his audacity and accompany a covetousness toward Lord clearly the devil is the author of negative volition as well as wine glory sin and evil so the first I will the second I will the third I will the fourth I will and the fifth I will we shall look the first I will is what I will ascend to heaven at this time Satan will Satan still inhabited the abode of God the third heaven the Bible speaks of more than one heaven telling us that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ passed through the heavens and Hebrews 4 14 4 a the band of atmosphere around the earth is the first heaven of the Genesis as told in Genesis 1 6 through 8 and 20 and is also specifically designated in Revelation 21 B the second heaven is the stellar universe the solar system and the planetary heavens of galaxies as told in Genesis 1 14 through 18 and the realm of angelic activity the third heaven is the throne room of God beyond stellar space it is the highest heavens as told in Deuteronomy 10 14 and the place of his throne room as told in first Kings 8 39 the third event is also the final residence for believers as told in John 14 2 and second Corinthians 12 2 so dear brethren we need to understand the third heaven the first I will is a defined expression exposing his burden his burning desire 
to displace God as the ruler of the third heaven. Notice, he did not say, I will remove God, a mission he knew was impossible, but he wanted to replace God's rule and almighty authority. The second I will is that I will raise my throne above the stars of God. The metaphor stars of God refers to angels as told in Job 38.7 and Revelation 12.4. And these are the angels which have been operating and some of the angels which have been confined before the flood. And those confined angels are the Nephilim and the ancient aliens technology or the evidences what they're finding and they're trying to tell in today's Christendom is purely based upon those Nephilim whereas those Nephilim have been confined and put in chains and all the things what they're having today about these Nephilim is nothing but myth and mythology and this myth and mythology has been causing even the Christian scholars or the Christian theologians or in fact even the Christian pastors to have their evidences in such kind of a useless and worthless talks maybe they might have been existed before this world has been made but we are not concerned considered about that. If we are ever considered, we are considered about only one thing, the knowledge of Bible doctrine. What you have to do if the earth has been one lakh million years old, or what you have to do if this has been so much of old. The only one thing that you need to know is this angelic conflict, the Satan and the operating and the confined angels, so that you can be a witness in this angelic conflict between the elect angels, so that the mystery doctrine of the church age, which has been kept upon your hands, which has been given to you, you need to take that into consideration and live a life that could be praise and honor and glory unto Lord God Almighty because he has bestowed upon us that matchless grace. Whenever you are considering, you need to consider those things wherewith Lord God Almighty has chosen you for his work. You need to consider what is my role at present. It is not to go and speculate and look upon those useless and worthless things and waste your time because I have told you again and again, I am telling you, Satan's desire is satisfied only when you are not able to learn the truth, not able to come to know the truth not able to understand the truth. Satan is satisfied till then. But when you start, when, but whenever you start reading the word of the Lord, are getting the right pastor teacher teaching through you, teaching to you through this ice communication from the original languages of the word, Satan is very much dissatisfied. And Satan will be very much eager enough by giving you all the pains and the play, and the, and the suffering by its own attack so that you can never know what it is and the power how you will be exalted in the heaven when you could reach to that experiential sanctification in Christ so we need to constantly wait and observe and look from the original language of the scriptures and try to discern these things and get to know what exactly is the truth so the refer to the angels is not the aliens what you are thinking that is there in your discovery. So this second great I will reveal Satan's ambition to seize, to seize greater power and the impatience to usurp the throne of God as the ruler of angels. As the super creature he wanted to be worshipped alongside God by the angelic creation. This was the arrogance of his thinking. Why should God not provide authority and autonomy to me? Am I not beautiful and brilliant above all others? Did he not create me to rule? This power lust would disrupt not only the angelic creation, but later the human race as well, as we have seen this same desire to control and rule over her husband through the first woman known as Isha. This is what, dear brethren, it is happening exactly today even in the churches as well. The church doesn't want to have the pastor teacher to rule over them so that he can inculcate to them the infallible and inherent word accurately only when he is faithfully prepared by rightly dividing the word of truth from the original language of the scriptures through the ice concept and the technique of dispensing technique so that the church can understand the truth and be under the authority or the obedience of the right pastor teacher to the right congregation and since the way how Isha that is what woman Eve wanted to rule over her husband exactly satan also wanted to be ruling telling to the point am i not brilliant am i not having am i not having the power to rule am i not the beautiful creature of all these things why should not god provide me the authority and autonomy to me this is what is ruining not only the first fallen satan even the first marriage of adam and eve now in the present christendom for each and every church that is the church elders the church 
church committee want to rule the pastor teacher not to give them the proper place not to give them the proper authority warranted of the power wherewith they have been graciously bestowed by lord and savior jesus christ this bona fide gift only to a male believer in rightly dividing the word of truth if these congregational members are absolutely right and if they're following those things which is right for them eyes if it is right for them then they are co considering a woman to have a preacher over them and they say we are the one who have appointed her to be as a reverend over us we are the one she can have authority over us you show you know what does it show it shows the nature and the poor and the foolishness of their attitude not having obedience towards the word of the lord and such kind of a people are ample in today's christendom they need to say we the church members are having the authority to rule we the church members are having everything in our hands to execute who are you to come and tell to us who are you to come and rule over us so dear brethren this is what exactly it is a pattern copy copied by satan towards the churches because they do not want to be under the care of a right pastor teacher who under subjected humility and authority over by lord he trains to you whose duty is to train you up so that when you are right your world will be right so this man if he doesn't know the christian virtue and if he wants to emphasize the entire life to be satisfying in the first stage of his spiritual growth that is by desiring the sincere milk of the word of the lord he should kill the old sin nature which is not possible but i meant to say as a metaphor killing in the sense to be dead to that old sin nature when in this body we know christ after knowing christ we need to be dead to this body says in romans exactly we need to understand that simple principle and apply onto our lives so the third i will is and then the further the second i will satan creates this powerless would disrupt not only the angelic creation but later the human race as well even we such we see today the third i will is and i will sit on the mount of assemblies in the recesses of the north this phrase reveals satan's desire to rule on the heavenly throne before all the assembled angels he wanted to reside in the very seat of power and authority occupied by lord god the father the one who would condemn him and this is the great 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 pride of the satan so that it can also be one among them to be honored among them and that is what many people today are trying to do that so the fourth i will will be i will ascend above the heights of the clouds many figurative uses of clouds in the bible refer to god's presence in exodus 33:9 isaiah 19:1 matthew 17:5 illustrating his unparalleled glory in exodus 16:10 16:14 and 16:34 and also as in first kings 8:10 to 11 and sovereign power in psalms 135:6 to 7 even though satan had been bestowed with tremendous honor and glory over other angelic creatures he grew increasingly dissatisfied with the position god had assigned him he craved to possess the very power and glory of power to of god to assert the throne for himself to overthrow divine authority ever more ambitious the fourth i will reflects his obsession with supplanting god as the ruler of the physical universe satan wanted all the glory yet he had neither the character the ability nor the means for it and that's what today we find the teachings like zakir naik or this ancient aliens concept or any other christadelphians or the cults who are not in accord with bible doctrine they want everything to be done that's the glory what they want to take but do you know what they do not have the character they do not have the ability nor the means to attain it because if the unbelievers they can attain it by salvation if the believers they can reach it by being under the controlling power ministry of lord god the holy spirit and the fifth i will is that i will make myself like the most high god this boast conveys that the escalation of satan's insatiable power lust i will be like god the mighty angel was impressed with god's omnipotence and sovereignty not with his grace or justice or righteousness or love notice his claim to be like the most high god satan knew he could never be equal equal to god but that did not rub curb his rabid hunger to rule his own kingdom he would endeavor to seize and hold the authority of god of fine futile ambition indeed so dear brethren we need to understand then starts the angelic revolt and then the trial of satan and after the fall of satan the way the promised seed to resolve this god created adam and eve the way how adam fell and then it wanted to infiltrate the promise given to eve that a man is going to come from your own seed and destroy the back of satan and that destruction was through by lord and savior jesus christ and to destroy this not and to and to see that this seed is not going to come to this world it had various attacks to infiltrate the genes of this human race and this genes of the human race was been done by the nephilims but the great flood and the judgment before that great flood taking out this and confining them into the 
tormentors wherewith they have been kept alive, wherein they have been kept so that they will be judged on the day of the judgment. That what you should understand that there are no Nephilims. If they were Nephilims, then the birth of Jonah with those three sons wouldn't have been pure genes. We would have been altered with our genes. We would have been given greater power. We would have been done each and everything what we could have done in this body. But Lord has kept them apart. So there are no Nephilims, there are no angels. Sorry, no aliens, but they are only angels. And to understand that angels, you should know and learn Bible doctrine. And to know and to learn Bible doctrine, what do you require? You require the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if there is no controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then there is no way you can ever come to know the truth. Nor you can ever understand the power of Bible doctrine given for us ultimately in this world. So with these few words I will end my tape and in the next tape we shall continue the things necessary for us. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to God the Father that they believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life. And this eternal life is for yours and, and, and it is free for you by your simple act of volition, telling to God the Father that you believe upon Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is the moment itself you shall have. And this is for you and for your own. The gospel is very simple. Believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. But whereas for an unbeliever, but whereas for a believer, the concept is very simple: grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine by the only infallible and inerrant word, which is God breathes. Second Timothy 3:16 and 17. And whereas for a passive teacher, what it is to preach the word because of the adjournment, because of the charge that has been given for us as a diamarturomai, the witnesses which has been given, so that we can know and we can understand the truth. The truth which we can understand is not been found in any other thing, but only in Bible doctrine. So for this truth alone, we should be waiting and we should be rightly dividing the truth. And if you are not able to do that, your purpose, your work, to preach the word that is Kerosothon Logan, and to build up this congregation, Kai Hosiatis Thes Aletia, holiness based upon biblical truth you can never come and you can never realize why you have been kept alive though so many things have been given for us in this unique dispensation of the church so which way you go you decide so father we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with through thy word we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and give them as a source of information and blessing and challenge so that they can understand the language of faith, they can understand their responsibility to lay down upon them in this unique dispensation of the church. Lord, many people have gone astray, not able to realize this mystery doctrine of the church age, of the unique spiritual life, of the soul blessings for time as well as for eternity. Help us to train them up so that they can realize and get back and put once again in the pulpits the ice concept only through the dispensing technique of dispensation so that they can know the truth and the truth shall them free and satan could be dissatisfied by their spiritual growth and not to be satisfied when they ignore the word of the lord to this extent we pray that lord god the holy spirit enlighten us for we ask it in the name of king of kings and lord of lords the bright morning star in his name we pray father amen